My name is Yevgenova Yelizaveta, and me with my co-author Dmitry Gromov would like to present our work called Analysis of Directed Sun Networks, Triangles and Entry. The scope of the classical complex networks theory is mostly restricted to the study of statistical properties of undirected and unweighted graphs. Uh, however, there are numerous applications that re require the use of more general graph structures. In particular, uh, in the last decade, there has been a growing interest uh, in studying signed networks. The networks where two nodes are connected by signed or weighted relation. The notion of sign networks was introduced uh, by Frank Rari in his structural balance theory. Within this context, uh, one associates friendship with a positive relation and antagonism with a negative one. When studying sign graphs from the balance-related point of view, it is essential to recognize whether a given graph exhibits a particular structure. So, for instance, if a triangle obeys the structural balance law, the size of the edges should multiply to a positive number. There is another theory called status theory. Uh, it interprets relation as acceptance or rejection of privacy. To illustrate the difference between these two theories, uh, consider the triangle, of, for instance, shown on the slide. While the theory of balance implies uh, that the marked edge um, from C to A uh, should be positive to ensure that the product of all signs is positive as well, uh, the theory of status predicts that the edge from C to A should be negative, since C has a higher status than A. On the other hand, if the edge between A and C changes its orientation and become uh, an edge from A to C, both theories would predict the same result, a positive weight. These observations stresses the importance of considering the orientation of the edges. Uh, there have been a number of works uh, similar in spirit with our study. We mentioned the paper by <coughs> Leskovets, Huttenlocher and Kleinberg who analyzed and systemized different approaches to the interpretation of the structure and evolution of such networks, including the status theory. An alternative approach devised by Yuri Allen and workers is aimed at determining network's motif, motifs, building blocks of large networks. The idea consists in generating a large number of random networks that possesses certain properties and computing uh, computing sample frequencies of specific subgraphs. These frequencies are later compared with empirical ones. Uh, as for our approach, uh, it is similar, as I said, in spirit with that used by Leskovitz, Kutenloch, and Kleinberg, uh, and of course different in several respects. What is the main difference uh, is that instead of estimating the theoretical frequencies from generated graphs, we compute them semi analytically using the developed algorithm. In this work, uh, we will consider triangles as elementary subgraphs. Um, we suggest that the frequencies of all triangles present in the overall network are to be compared to the theoretical frequencies computed for a theoretical graph that has uh, the same distribution of edges as the original one. Uh, in this way, we can determine the triangles whose uh, frequencies deviate most strongly from the theoretical frequencies. When analyzing the structure of a network, uh, it is often instructive to take a closer look at the elementary building blocks of this network. Uh, in the following, uh, we will concentrate on the analysis of different oriented signed triangles that appear in a network. We will call a triangle the set of three vertices such that any two vertices are connected by an edge, whereas the direction of edge is not substantial. Uh, specifically, we will be interested in determining which triangles are characteristic for a given network. The notion of characteristic requires some additional elaboration. Uh, one might consider triangle characteristic if it appears in the world network more often compared to other triangles, 
Uh, however, we know that distinct triangles may have different uh, a prior probabilities of occurrence. To compute these probabilities, we suggest considering a theoretical baseline graph that possesses certain um, statistical properties of the network understudy. Uh, we will consider a specific triangle as characteristic if it possesses two properties. First, the triangle occurs in the network sufficiently often uh, to not be considered as a mere fluctuation. And second, the empirical probability of the triangle is sufficiently larger than its theoretical probability. What else we should keep in mind? In practice, when considering different subgraphs in a graph, uh, we are interested in ident identifying the structures that are invariant with respect to the way we denote or enumerate the vertices. Such structures are closely related to the notion of graph isomorphism. Simply, uh, two graphs are isomorphic if one graph can be transformed uh, into another one without breaking or weighting edges. We can see on these uh, slides a complete set of signed isomorphic digraphs as an example. As I said before, uh, the algorithm boils down to determine the triangles in Real in real graph was uh, frequencies deviate more strongly from their frequencies in the baseline and these frequencies of triangles in the baseline graph are called theoretical frequencies while the uh, observed frequencies of triangles are referred to as empirical frequencies. The ratio of the theoretical frequency of a specific triangle to the total number of all triangles uh, is called the theoretical probability. Similarly, we denote empirical probability. Uh, these probabilities are computed modulo isomorphism relation we mentioned previously. The key issue uh, in computing theoretical frequencies consists in generating an appropriate random baseline graph. This approach has inherent problem that the estimations computed in this way do not provide the actual values of the theoretical characteristics, but only tend to them as the number of elements in uh, ensemble goes to infinity. infinity. Uh, this means that obtaining uh, accurate estimations for the theoretical frequencies can be rather time consuming. In this contribution, uh, we will pursue a different course and um, concentrate on the analytical computation of theoretical frequencies of triangles. To do so, we restrict ourselves to considering a theoretical graph that has the same probabilities of edges as the original one. We define the empirical probability that there is an edge with a specific weight between two randomly chosen vertices from a real graph. Uh, also, we define the probability that there are no edges between two arbitrary vertices. We will specify triangles by their signature, uh, I mean the sequence of weights of edges between any pair of vertices. Uh, however, this probability has to be adjusted to take into account their arbitrary vertices numbering. Since we do not distinguish between two isomorphic graphs, uh, the computed probability should be multiplied with the number of elements in the corresponding isomorph isomorphism class. We apply the devised uh, approach to the structural analysis of the sign network, describing the relationship between Wikipedia users that participated in administrator elections. As we know, uh, Wikipedia is a free encyclopedia written collaboratively by volunteers around the world. We analyze data obtained from the network that describes the results of uh, Wikipedia administrator election. And uh, Wikipedia uh, is an encyclopedia whose operation is uh, supervised and controlled uh, by a relatively small number of administrators. And, uh, these administrators are the users with additional rights and access to technical features that aid in maintains. If a regular user desires to become an administrator, 
uh, he fills the request for adminship. Uh, subsequently, the Wikipedia community votes on whom to nominate for adminship. Uh, one person can cast one of three types of votes, for, positive, uh, against, negative, and neutral. Uh, note that a vote can be cast both by existing admins and by ordinary Wikipedia users. Um, Les Cavett, Hutenlocher, and Kleinberg uh, extracted uh, this information uh, about uh, there are about uh, 2,800 elections from a complete dump of Wikipedia page uh, as its history from uh, January the 3rd, uh, 2008. Uh, out of these, uh, 1,200 elections resulted in a successful promotion, while about 1,000 and a half uh, elections did not result in the promotion. Here on this slide, uh, we can see basic statistics on table one. Uh, on table two, there is some more information uh, about triangles. Uh, they divided uh, uh, to the number of edges, three, four, five, and six. Uh, and here we can underline that the triangles with three and four edges cover 96% of all triangles. Uh, also, we have some network characteristics on table 3. And uh, here, uh, on this slide, uh, a selection of the triangles with three edges is presented. Uh, in total, the listed triangles cover 95.99% uh, of all triangles with three edges. This table does not include 24 triangles that amount, uh, that amount to only 4% of uh, the total population. Thus, the collection shown uh, is deemed uh, represent uh, representative. Uh, rho sub e is the probability ratio of the eth triangle. And uh, we start by observing some general patterns that appear in this list. The first observation is that all triangles except the first one form a transitive structure. This observation contrasts sharply with the theoretical estimation. Indeed, uh, there are at most 10 circle triangles, of which only one is present in the list. Furthermore, uh, this single triangle has the smallest ratio among all triangles, and such a pattern indicates that there is a strong tendency to subordination in the considered triads whereas the person at whom both branches uh, converge plays a distinct role. Uh, this explanation strongly correlates with the predictions given by the theory of status that suggests that a positive edge indicates that A considers B as having a high status and the opposite if the edge is negative. Within the context of the considered problem, it might be more accurate to speak of respect or merit rather than status. When voting pro or contra can, can see, uh, the users evaluate the qualities of that person which may or may not correlate uh, with her, his status. However, while having uh, this interpretation in mind, we will stick to con conventional notation. We will assume that two people connected by a neutral edge consider themselves as having the same status. It turns out that six most characteristic triangles satisfy exactly the uh, status balance rule. However, a present scheme does not allow for quantifying the strength of positive and negative relations. Uh, here on this slide, uh, on the top, uh, you can see two possible predictions, colored blue, using status law. On the first triangle, we can predict a positive relation if existing relation from A to B is more powerful when, than positive edge we predict. On the second triangle, we can predict negative relation if existing relation from B to C is more powerful than 
of this negative edge we predict. Uh, in this case, there are four extra triangles on the lines uh, green uh, that may potentially satisfy the status law. Uh, so to make the status theory even more compatible with the observed results, we should allow for a certain freedom in interpreting the status levels. And since we consider only free weights, any type of subordination has to fit into this rather narrow framework. Uh, it is clear, though, that often it is difficult to uniquely qualify the subordination relation. To look at the problem from a different side, we consider whether shown triangles agree with the structural band theory. However, note uh, that the structural band theory is not actually capable of interpreting the neutral edges. Uh, this stems from the fact that a neutral edge can potentially be considered either as a weak positive or a weak negative relation and uh, within the context of the considered problem the neutral edge should be interpreted as a weak positive relation and following this assumption uh, we see that there are in total eight triangles that formally agree with the structural balance theory. However, among those uh, triangles, only three belong to the top seven most characteristic triangles. Uh, there is a different aspect that goes, that does not uh, fit into the structural balance theory. Uh, the point is that the majority of triangles do not have reciprocal edges, although the theory suggests that the triangles with closer ties should prevail. To take a closer look into the problem, we consider the class of triangles with four edges, which form one-fifth of world population. Thus, we can look, conclude that the status theory offers a more consistent description to the observed triangles. Here on uh, this slide, a selection of the triangles with four edges is presented. The list of triangles cover uh, 85.13 percent of all triangles with four edges. Well, there are still about 15 percent of all triangles that are not represented in this table. Uh, these have rather small frequencies. Uh, in total, the left out 15 percent correspond to 145 different triangle classes. Um, and uh, we should keep in mind that we do not uh, distinguish between two isomorphic graphs and count only isomorphism classes. Again, uh, we start by, by observing some general patterns that appear in this list. And uh, similarly to the previous case, we see that there is a, a dominating pattern, a pair of closely, ti closely tied uh, vertices and third vertex, uh, either subordinate or subordinate to these two. It is remarkable that in 8 out of 10 cases, the edges between the tight pair and the third vertex uh, are either both positive or positive and neutral, whereas the subordination is expressed by the direction of the edges. The prevalence of such a pattern can be seen as an argument in favor of the status theory. On the other hand, uh, when considering the tied pairs of vertices, one can see that the theory of status can explain only a smaller fraction of all such pairs. Uh, if a person A, for instance, considers person B as having high status, we would expect that person B considers person A as having a lower status. Uh, in our collection, uh, we observe exactly the opposite. There are uh, eight ties of type positive-positive, one of type negative-negative, uh, and two ties of type positive-neutral, and only three ties of type uh, positive-negative. Only the last type of ties, and partially the second to the last one, agree with the status rule. Uh, an alternative approach to analyze oriented subgraphs consists in considering such triangles 
as a superposition of several elementary triangles. Even fever triangles satisfy the status law when analyzed from this perspective. Uh, using this uh, principle of superposition in analyzing triangles for four edges, each triangle can be uniquely represented as a superposition of two elementary triangles. Of the list of triangles, um, six triangles, of which five are the most characteristic ones, agree with the structural balance rule, while the remaining eight violate this rule. Uh, this Operant difficultly with superposition principle uh, can be resolved if we consider the tie pairs as a single unit. In this case, we have only two actors, a pair and a third person. The relations between these two actors boil down to, the, to two scenarios. Either both members of the pair consider the third person as having a higher uh, or equal status, or the opposite. 10 out of 14 triangles shown on the slide can be interpreted along this line. The interaction structure uh, within a tight pair is formed according to the different rules that cannot be adequately described by either the structural balance or status theory. This result stresses the need to distinguish between single edges and pairs of reciprocal edges. To conclude the performed analysis, we briefly consider the case of triangles with either five or six edges. In total, such triangles constitute, uh, constitute less than 4% of the total population of triangles. Um, of these triangles, about 60% are the triangles with five or six positive edges, edges. And this result does not require detailed interpretation, but instead suggests that uh, there is a number of strongly connected groups that support each other. And uh, a different question would be consist in analyzing the size and structure of such groups, but this lies beyond the scope of this research. The main contribution of this paper, of this presentation, is twofold. First, uh, we presented an approach to determine characteristic subgraphs of a given network. In this paper, we studied only triangles, but the described morphology can be easily or at least conceptually easily uh, extended to more general classes of subgraphs. And uh, second, we carried out an analysis of a specific directed weighted network and provided a detailed interpretation of the obtained results from the viewpoint of two different theories, the structural balance theory and status theory. Their results are quite remarkable. Uh, the considered network mainly agrees with the status theory if we exclude from, the, uh, from consideration strongly tied uh, vertices, uh, vertices that are connected in both directions. The strongly tied vertices tend to be of positive positive type. However, uh, there exists a considerable proportion of other types of connections that indicates the need for a more detailed analysis of such cases. Uh, the latter result is particularly significant as it points out at the importance of separately considering single and double connections. Uh, this fact was already suggested by Les Cavett, Huttenlocher and Kleinberg, uh, albeit from a different perspective. And uh, we plan to carry out a detailed analysis of this ph phenomenon uh, within a broader context of directed sign networks. In particular, we plan to first refine the definition of a characteristic subgraph, second, make an application of a developed approach to other directed sign networks, and third, have further analysis of the relation structure in considered networks. Thank you for your attention.